I'm John Skinner, and this supports my online fluke fishing course at saltstrong.com skinner. And I'll have links to all of the gear in the description of the video. So here's another trip that I'm really happy about. I haven't done one of these fluke wading trips in just about three years. And part of the reason is because I moved and it's a little less convenient for me to do. But the big reason is that the fishing um, on the bays where I typically do this kind of fishing, um, it just hasn't been very good the last two seasons. Now, if you saw my latest video uh, in the kayak, it was uh, shallow bay fishing. and. Uh, I did quite well and uh, I was extremely encouraged by that, um, enough so that I decided, hey, I'm going to give this a shot and uh, see if I can get some fish wading because I've, I've always enjoyed uh, fishing these things that way. So you see I'm wading through some pretty shallow water, but I'm casting into water that's uh, 10 to 15 feet deep at the deepest and uh, I've got a channel in front of me. So in a few minutes, I'm going to tilt the camera down so that you're going to be able to see how I'm cranking on the reel and will allow you to see what the retrieve speed is. Ooh, that was a good hit. Oh, here's something. Yeah, definitely not how I want to start. These things have inundated the bays the last couple of years. I didn't catch them the other day in the kayak. Uh, not happy to see this. Hey, that's a wet rag. These things are spines and spikes and all kinds of fun stuff. Yeah, I know I can lip them. You know what? Cradle it with a wet rag. That's really easy on the fish. I'm not going to get stuck. And uh, off it goes in fine condition. Um, yeah. Uh, Boy, these sea robins, when they move in, they can be really tough. So uh, at this point, I'm getting a little bit worried. All right, and this is a three-quarter ounce bucktail. And what I'm looking to do is, on the cast, make sure I get down to the bottom. Uh, and then you'll s get to see the retrieve. It's going to be a slow retrieve. You see the rod action. So I'm just trying to get plenty of motion on the jig within a foot or so of the bottom, foot or two feet, somewhere close to the bottom. That's the strike zone. Uh, and these pauses that you see, I mean, I'm just starting here. I'm trying to feel out the bottom, the current, and I want to make sure that uh, I am near the bottom. Okay, very, very encouraging, especially so quickly. Um, yep, well, it's just one for now. Let's see. And I'm fishing on a 19-inch size limit, and nope, that one's not going to make it. Uh, but it's a good start. And I do want to keep, um, if I get a fish or two this trip, I, I definitely want to keep it. So... Um, yep, all right, uh, that's a start. All right, you see I'm using the three inch gulp shrimp uh, on the teaser, and I do that anytime that I'm in a, a mud environment. I know this looks like it's all sand, but the channel's mud. Uh, you can actually tell that, and we'll see it a little better um, on, on some of the fish, the coloring. But it, it's a mud bottom, so I suspect the fish are on crab, so I'm gonna start with a shrimp, and on the bottom, on the bucktail, I have that tipped with a four-inch gulp nemesis. I really like the action on the nemesis. Uh, the other day in the kayak, there were not many sea robins, so I thought to myself I could get away with using the nemesis. The problem with the nemesis is uh, it, the tail rips easily, so if you've got a lot of sea robins or sea bass or anything like that, they'll tear those tails off. Uh, otherwise, it has great action. Small fluke. 
small as they get. Yeah, this might be the smallest fluke I've caught all season so far. It is tiny. But, y you know, I'd like to see any fluke at all because um, the fishing has been getting more challenging. So it's great to see small ones. It's great to see a, a good mix in size. And uh, so that, that's fine. And you know what? Hey, it's another fluke. So I've got two fluke, and it's giving me some more encouragement. Now, something that's not quite optimal is uh, I've only got about 45 minutes of incoming water, and that's what I would prefer to be fishing. Uh, I'm on a bay that's separated from the ocean by a barrier island. On the incoming, uh, cleaner ocean water pours in. On the ebb, you tend to get more weeds. So I'm um, going to make the most of the f flood here, the incoming, and hope that the outgoing um, doesn't mess me up too bad with weeds. So while doing this, anytime you feel a little extra weight, and hey, that could be weeds, doesn't matter, you swing. Uh, if you feel slack, that's definitely a fish. You definitely swing and try to set the hook. So these shrimp might be the most durable gulp. Uh, they don't tear. They really hold up well. Uh, yeah, you know what? The fish will pull them down a little bit. I, I just re-thread them on. And uh, yeah, you can definitely catch a few fish on each shrimp. All right, so note here, I'm not retrieving. I'm letting it sink, sink, sink. What I'm doing is just maintaining contact with the line, watching the line very carefully. You'll see like a little twitch when it hits bottom. As soon as I see that, then I'll start the retrieve. Note how that fish came off and went right back after it. It's just like fishing in the boat. Nice. Huh. That was a, an aggressive, an aggressive hit. That's a keeper. Too. So I've kind of half decided to net this thing just so I can, uh, I, I have a fish stringer in my pocket. I want to be able to get to that and, and keep the fish in the net. So um, not too gracefully I'll do this. Okay, you hear all those birds in the background. Those aren't the birds I'm interested in. What I'm seeing, though, uh, are arctic terns, the little seabirds, and they're hitting the water and they're picking up some small bait, almost certainly sand eels. Uh, with sand eels in the water, I'm going to switch off of the gulp shrimp and put on just a single sand eel on the hook. I think that looks extremely natural, and I'm uh, going to give that a shot.
All right, here's where I've tilted the camera down so that you can watch what I'm doing with the reel. Okay, so just a small fish, but it did hit the sand eel. Uh, something else to notice, not only the retrieve for the fish, but uh, when I hook up, I'm going to keep steady reeling on these things. The fluke especially can so easily shake off if they get any kind of slack. So you want to always, uh, when you've got one of these things on, keep a bend in the rod. And, you know, yeah, that sounds obvious, and in a boat it's, it's easy to do. But when you're bringing a fluke at you, even a larger one, you know, it's gliding along. So you really need to make an effort to keep that thing moving. Because if you lighten up a little bit, um, yep, they can just shake the way they do, and uh, you lose it.
So this is not a fluke. Uh, we call these sundials. Another name is uh, window pane flounder, and they're called that because they're like so thin. And because they're so thin, I've never known anybody to eat them. That's actually a fairly large one. Maybe you could get some meat off of that, but yeah, you know, off it goes. All right, so that's a good example of hooking one on the channel edge. Uh, that uh, hooked twice, actually. Um, that retrieve was all the way in and uh, just where the channel was coming up the slope. And a lot of times the fish are there. You have to make sure you work that really carefully. All right, you may have noticed the weeds are getting worse and worse. I mean, I'm editing out casts like that, but they're becoming more and more numerous. I mean, look at all of that weed in the water. I actually thought I was going to be done at this point because I just couldn't get through them. And you see I'm walking, and I'm going to walk maybe 100 feet or so and pretty much walk my way out of it. So, um, you know, sometimes the currents uh, come together in a way that they kind of deposit these things or run them through in, into the same spot and as I'm walking they're getting a little bit less and I'm gonna get to a point maybe another 50 feet from where I am uh, where it's okay you can see it's uh, they're thinning out so sometimes a little move will make a big difference
I'd like to just see this one. <laughs> oh, this is too much. I've got a double header with a fluke. <laughs> oh, there goes the fluke. <laughs> And a big skew. No wonder it felt so good. Shoot. Again, it's right on the edge of the channel. Yes. 
Well, I'm really thrilled to see this. Um, I've had very, very few doubles casting. I am not sure I've ever had any. I, uh, probably at one point, but um, yeah, so there's a decent number of fish around. I'm not showing all the ones I'm catching, and uh, I'm going to cut the video short and leave a bunch off, so I end up catching a lot of fish this trip. And uh, so given the way it's been the last couple of seasons, it's uh, really great to see all these fish. Uh, yeah, he's not quite going to make it. He's going to be just short of the 19-inch limit, and uh, so he gets to go back. And uh, I'm not going to get any more keepers. I'm going to have one non-fluke that I'm going to um, show near the end of the video, and um, just a couple of others. So, oh, hey, check this out. Look at this watercolor. Um, it's a really great example of how the water quality can degrade on the outgoing current in, in areas like this. That water was so clear on incoming, and now uh, as it's dropping and the water's getting pulled from the deeper reaches of the bay, it's getting dirtier, it's getting weedier. And um, But hey, y you know what? The, f the fish are still there. I'm still catching, um, especially if you can work through the weeds and the weeds don't kill you. It can still be quite productive. Um, if you haven't checked it out, I would encourage you to check out my online fluke, or yeah, you know, they're also called summer flounder. Uh, course at saltstrong.com/skinner, and there's a discount on that link. And um, yeah, if you're not a subscriber, I would uh, ask you to subscribe if you like these videos. And all right, there's a few more fish to catch, and thanks for watching. I thought it was going to be a bluefish, but uh, it's turned out to be a shad. <laughs> 